Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope that that animation got you super excited to jump into Blender with me today. So without further ado, let's hop in. The first note I would like to make is I'm using Blender 3.4 beta. You can find that in the daily downloads link in the Blender website. And from here, once you've got that downloaded, you're gonna need a Panther or some type of model to work in these scenes. So lucky for us, I found a awesome model and I photo scanned it at my wife's local furniture store. So you can find those on my Gumroad link. They're free and you can download them along with some reference animations and some other 3D models like the Black Panther model we'll be using in this one. Once you've got those downloaded, let's hop into Blender. Let's go into the preferences. And from here, let's go into the viewport and enable GPU subdivision and then the add on search extra, make sure add mesh extras is there and node wrangler. Then go into the interface developer extras into the experiments and real time compositor. We'll use this later. I won't get into it right now. From there, we're just going to delete everything in our scene and import those two 3D models we downloaded. So once we've got them in there, I'm just going to zoom in and center. I'm going to center the black panther model over the cursor. I'm going to enter top view and then I'm just going to add a mirror modifier to the Black Panther here. I'm going to pull it out about two and a half squares away from him and then I'm going to leave edit mode and bring the Panther back on the Y axis and move the Panther models about 15 blocks backwards. This is a good setup and will allow us a lot of room to move. I'm going to go extras, step pyramid and we're going to start building the platforms. So I'm just going to bring down the steps to five, increase the initial width, reduce the steps and then rotate it on 45 degrees and make sure there's some space in between his limbs and the edge. Then I'm just going to increase the height and then just bring it down on the z-axis until it lines up with his feet. From there I'm going to zoom out a little bit and edit mode and then bring the bottom down a little bit so that we never see the bottom of the model. From there I'm going to duplicate it and bring it back and then use a mirror modifier in edit mode to I'm going to use a mirror modifier. Make sure you apply the scale and the rotation first though. Then bring it under the bring it under the black panther, select the sides and bring them in. And then same with the length. Just bring it to the the right length. Then now that we've got those, I'm just gonna center the panther a little bit better. And then from there, we need to add a bevel modifier to these platforms. Should have done that first, but I think I set the value to 0.015. Yeah, that's looking about right. And then three segments. Shade it smooth, and then we're ready to move forward. Do this with the back models as well. 0.015, three segments, shade smooth. So shade everything else smooth and let's, now let's add some materials to our Black Panther model. I'm going to make two, one called Black Panther Sand and then the other one Metal. I'm going to enter in and just select the claws on his chest and click Control L and then assign them so that the metal is assigned only to those. Then we can see that they're working, select everything, Control L and link the materials. Then I'm just going to delete the metal under all of the platforms and whatnot. Now we need to make a camera rig. So let's just zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to add an empty square. So scale that down by 0.5, then add a camera and reset the rotation on it. Then select the camera, then the cube, parent it, and then we're going to add a object constraint. And it's going to follow a curve. You can see some more details on this if you follow Smeef's video here. Super great video, by the way. Once we've got our curve in there, we're just going to select the cube and add an object constraint of follow to, and select the Bezier curve. Then we're gonna rename the curve to camera tracking or camera follow. And then from there, I'm just going to test the factor then we're going to set some keyframes at the start and end of the timelines. Set a keyframe at frame zero at value zero and then shift right arrow and then set a keyframe to one at the end of the timeline. This should allow the cube to flow across the curve throughout the animation. From here on we can just edit our curve and add some details to our animation. So I'm going to speed through this really quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you how I did it because it's pretty straightforward on just putting the curve in a specific place. And I just made a path that went around the Panthers and then ended in front of the entire composition. Once you have something that you like, just make sure that everything's working and we're gonna finish the rig. So add a empty sphere. And from here, we're going to also add a plane axis and name that focus tracking and the first sphere empty, the camera tracking. This allows us to then select this, add a track to and track it to the sphere. And now you can see if we change our focal length and add it to the focus. Then now if we grab that sphere, we can move around and the camera will always point at that sphere. Then you can line the sphere up with the panther's face because that is the first point of focus. 
And here we're just going to select the camera as well and make sure that our settings are dialed in. I'm just going to adjust the focal length to 100 millimeters. And then, I, yes, I like this motion. I'm liking the way it's moving. Sweet. Now you can see it's still pointing at the panther once we get near the end. So near the end we need to move the sphere and bring it up forward. First, so I'm going to activate depth of field in the solid view mode and oh, I forgot to move the tracking. So if you forgot to do this as well, just select your sphere, click Shift S and then cursor to select it. Then select the focus tracking object, Shift S selected to cursor. And then we can parent those so that it I don't forget to move it in the end. Then you can still grab the focus object and change the focus after. It just follows where your camera is pointing now, which gives you a really powerful rig that allows you to focus and move the camera very easily along the spline. Okay, moving on, I'm just going to look at this and we're going to start adding some keyframes to create a speed warp animation. So I'm just going to find a spot that I like, add a keyframe, and then extend that out and then find a place that I want it to be short and then keyframe the next place I want to be and bring that in close. Sweet, okay. Moving on from there, now we want to align the camera with the Black Panther model once it's near the end. So I'm going to find a place where it's already almost straight and I'm going to set a keyframe by activating the auto keyframer button here next to the play and stop button and then hit G0 and then move forward in the timeline until a place that I'd like it to be and set that keyframe near the Panther. Then we're just going to line it up, make sure that it's got the correct focus and pointing the right direction. And then from there in the camera view, you should be able to see our final composition. I'm going to bring this curve down just a bit so that we can have kind of a looking up point of view because that gives the Black Panther a little bit more of a powerful stance visually. I think I'm liking this, yes. I just want that front platform to be a bit higher. Do a couple more adjustments, make sure the animation looks right. All right, sweet. I'm just going to extend this just a bit, give myself a little bit of room to play with. And then from there, just start editing your splines to make sure that everything is correct and matches the animation that you would like to make. You can do anything with this, get really creative, use your own imagination. Okay. I suggest you always hop back into the camera view and run it through a few times just to make sure that it looks correct. Once you've got a camera animation that you like, then we can move on to the next stage. I also really liked the slanted camera, so I'm going to come to the keyframe 360 because this is where I want the camera to stay flat, so I'm going to set a keyframe when it's already flat so I don't have to worry about straightening it out later. And then come back to frame 215, set a keyframe and rotate it to the left. And we are using auto keyframing, so anything you move will automatically keyframe into that position, which is super helpful. And from there I just track it to make sure that it looks okay. I think that's looking good, so let's move on into the shading which is really exciting. All right, thank you for sticking around through part one of creating Black Panther in Blender 3.4. If you enjoyed this, click here to see part two, where we're gonna go over environment lighting, shading, material setups, as well as real-time compositing to get your scene looking epic for your final render. And don't forget, create more than you consume.